Talking Tunes, Oscar Osbo here with Peter Manning and the uh, executive director of what? No, S P L K A. You can tell me what that is because I'll mess it up. Okay, uh, it is the Savo Point Lighthouse Keepers Association. Right, it's very simple, Savo Point Lighthouse Keepers Association. But you know, I never, I never can remember. And thank you, Peter, for for joining me today. I really appreciate it, Peter. I've I've known you now for about what about a year now, right? Yeah, yeah, just a little over a year. That's great. Yeah, so we uh, we did a little project together to uh, to put together some videos for the lighthouses, which was the, uh, of course, the the one on in White White River, the White River uh, Light Station, and mm-hmm. also Sable Big Sable Point. So uh, and then we did a couple other things, but we had we had a lot of I had a lot of fun. Did you have a lot of fun? Oh, we we had a lot of fun doing it too. And boy, I tell you, uh, this past uh, season. You know, we showed both those videos, both at Big Savo and at White River, and we got several wonderful comments about the videos. So, good, good. Yeah. That's good. Our That's always good to hear. Very impressed. Yeah. Always good to hear. So now you are the now explain your duties, so to speak, because you you take care of uh, Big Savo, Little Savo, uh, White River Light Station, and the Ludington North Breakwater. Right? Is that with right. your group? Okay. Now, what yep, yep. What do you exactly do as the executive? Well, I'm the executive director, and uh, I have a small staff of uh, five other people that work with me. Uh, our mission is to preserve, promote, and educate the public okay. to make a, and to make our lighthouses accessible to all. So in that, that means that we have over 400 volunteers that come in and help us keep our lighthouses open uh, from 10 to 5 daily uh, at all four of our lighthouses. So... Uh, it, it, it's kind of fun because volunteers come in from all over the country. And uh, I think we had like 40, 40 different states represented this year. Uh, we were down, I think we had 43 the, the year before or something, but uh, represented of uh, people that come in to stay either a week or two weeks with us. And at Big Sabo, you get to stay right out at the lighthouse. At, uh, at our other lighthouses, you get to stay in a residence uh, that we have for you to uh, uh Stay at because there's no room at the at the towers uh, to stay. Now, of course, at the, 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 the you don't need anybody to stay over at the White River Light Station because uh, Matt is over there, our, our, uh, the official keeper over there. He's yep. one of the. Yep, yeah. that's right. Yeah, so we just actually we just have daykeeper opportunities over at the White River Light Station. So no no uh, overnight accommodations there because, as you said, our curator Matt Varnum uh, does a wonderful job for us and. Uh, he gets to live right there at the lighthouse, so kind of every person's dream to live at the lighthouse. Yeah, yeah, and uh, of course, I I knew uh, uh, the pass keeper over there. Uh, not a, not well, not Will Robinson, of course, but you know, uh, William, uh, but Karen McDonald. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> but she was uh, there for a long time. Oh yeah, but let's just talk about let's talk about that real quick, just just because sure. uh, that was kind of a fun story to do. We did a, the lighthouse keepers thing where. Um, you had we had the actual uh, log of the lighthouse keeper, which was uh, uh, what was Will, William Robinson, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. We had we had the lighthouse keeper's log from uh, from the beginning, which was uh, Captain uh, William Robinson, and, and, and he, uh, also his son, or well, his grandson, Captain Bush, which is the lighthouse keeper who followed him. And what we did was uh, we. Uh, went through those logbooks and we found really uh, interesting entries in the logbooks, like uh, when electricity was first uh, brought to the lighthouse or the the piers caught on fire another time. And uh, we had an actor, or, well, an actor, one of our volunteers who dresses up as the lighthouse keeper. He did a great job, yeah. For us, yeah, came in and he kind of acted it out. And then Oscar had... Uh, and somebody read the line and uh yeah it was it, it, don anderson yeah 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 okay and uh and it, and it worked out wonderfully so and we got a lot of great comments on it a lot of fun too it was a lot of fun yeah. putting that together it was that was the hardest one to put together but it was it was worth it it was a lot of fun it was it was very much so and uh the store downtown uh you know helped us out by uh, kind of creating a office for the lighthouse keeper as well with a desk and everything yeah Plus, in the in the meantime, we also got uh, we got a chance to get um, Brett Ashcroft's video that he did when you uh, when the ship was uh, being seen on the beach there too. So that right, was kind of yes. neat. Yep, very much so. And and once once again, you can see 
parts of it again uh, have been uncovered uh, with this uh, with the shoreline erosion. Erosion, again, yeah, so. yeah, I would imagine so. Okay, um, the the one thing over there, of course, you know, there there's supposedly the ghost of William Robinson that's still still hanging out there. Matt, I, I talked to Matt, and Matt said he's never heard any any, but uh, right. <laughs> there's reports. There's reports. You know, yeah, that's right. Karen, Karen uh, McDonald had some some very interesting stories. So yeah, uh, about uh, you know going dusting, you know, being upstairs dusting yeah. in the museum and coming back and. Uh, after taking a phone call and having the dusting all done for her and uh, the rags folded up and uh, all put away. Okay. So. And let's just say it's not, it wasn't memory loss, but anyway. <laughs> no, that's right, yeah. <laughs> but, but William Robinson was a very unique character because he's the one that helped not only clear uh, there for, for the ships to get through, but he also helped build the lighthouse, and he, yep. he would not leave. Even though they wanted him to leave, he would not leave. He stayed there till he died. So yeah, that, that, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, you know, he was he was a lighthouse keeper, and then uh, the following keeper that followed him was his grandson. But uh, he ended up staying at the lighthouse, even over the objections of the lighthouse board at the time, and said that only one family could live at the lighthouse. But uh, Captain Robinson stayed there, and. Uh, he had he had vowed uh, never to leave, and when the lighthouse board finally enacted, when he was eighty six, you know, sent him a letter and said, you know, thirty days to vacate the property. Um, you know, the day before the sheriff was to come and get him, uh, is when he passed away. Isn't that crazy? That's just crazy. It it's a great much. story, though. Great story. It is. It is very yeah. much so. And he had a real love for the for the area, and you know, and for the ships and and uh, that type of thing. So. Now you you have a, a similar ghost over at Big Sabo, which is uh, is Henry, right? Wasn't Henry? Henry, yeah, Henry is a is our ghost. Uh, Henry was a keeper from I think nineteen about nineteen fifty six to nineteen sixty two, and uh, so yeah, we've had a lot of reports of uh, people seeing like maybe the top, uh, you know, uh, a person walking um, with their back to them or a lot of doors being unlocked, uh, baking a bread, you know, smelling baking bread, uh, when nothing's really in the oven and especially cigar smoke, uh, that, uh, they'll walk in and we don't have any, there's no smoking in the, in the lighthouse, but people will swear that somebody's smoking the cigars. Right. Well, yeah. And, and that could be explained by people coming in there with cigar smoke on their, on their, Sure. person sure. or whatever but yep. but and you know and the other thing about the keepers are too that some of the stories of the keepers because we looked at the the log book of uh, some of the ghost reportings too and right some yeah. some of the keepers said it was cigar smoke some of it said it was pipe smoke yes. but yep. that, de- definitely a different yeah, yeah definitely right. a different yep, smell so. yeah and and his actually his uh, stepson visited last summer and i was telling him about some of the stories and he said well yeah he said my dad was a real practical joker <laughs> yeah. And re- so, <laughs> well, the, 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 he, he said I wouldn't put any of those stories. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my dad. So. Well, the the you know, there's there was some good ones too about the the rosary appearing and uh, the yes. one that they talk about where they can feel somebody kicking them in bed and you know when they're sl- sleeping there by themselves and you know right, stuff yeah. like that. It's fun stuff. It's just fun stuff. Yep. But it anyway, fun stuff. It so fun stuff. So we don't take it real seriously, but it's. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of fun to talk about. Right. So, uh, White River Light Station, um, the uh, Sabo Point, Big Sabo, and Little Sabo, and they'll be open again in for tours in May, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, White River and Little Sabo and the Breakwater all open the Friday, uh, right before Memorial Day, and uh, Big Sabo opens a little bit earlier. That opens May sixth. Okay. You're listening to Oscar Osbo. We're back on Talking Tunes, and we're talking with Peter Manning, the executive director over the Lighthouses. Now, it's, let's talk a little bit about the, the little serious thing as far as the erosion, though. You've had some trouble over there at Big Sabal, and of course, uh, um, over at uh, even at White, R- White River, you've had a, a little bit of. Uh, well, you, the boat is coming back. I guess you can see that again. So it's not really. Right. Erosion problem was much there, but I guess Big Sobble's having some troubles. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are having a lot of erosion problems at Big Sobble and also at uh, Little Sobble Point too. So okay. The the water at Little Sobble is about twelve feet away from uh, the tower. Wow. Um, 
and uh, the the base of the tower has like us. It's like a retaining wall, uh, but you really can't see it because most of it's underground or something. And, uh, but it's got rocks piled on it, so it's about 12 feet away from there. Uh, the locals have told me that um, back in 1986, 87, the water was right up to the rocks. So, hmm. so they they don't seem to be too concerned. Um, I did have somebody took a picture of Little Sable and put it on Facebook, yeah. and it showed that it was tilting. And I get a lot. Of, I get phone calls from like Las Vegas and. It must have really hit Florida because we had like 20 phone calls from people in Florida wanting to know how come we were letting it fall into the water. So, but uh, the state park and ourselves are monitoring it and making sure that uh, that that little sable is safe. Uh, some of the dunes around, and of course, the beach uh, has eroded has eroded greatly around there. So, right. the beach is probably you know I started seven years ago, and the beach is probably only a third of what it was seven years ago. Now, where is Little Sable exactly? Uh, it's in Silver Lake. Okay. And uh, it's on the Lake Michigan shoreline. Okay. Um, and it's in the uh, Silver Lake State Park there. So. Okay. And uh, as far as the um, the erosion there, is it really tilting, or is that just a bad it, photography? It was, it was, it was, it was just uh, the angle of the photograph. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so was the guy drinking the before before he took the picture? Or was the guy drinking yeah. before he took the picture? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. But so, it's it's great that people are concerned about it, though. That they uh, are very much so. Yeah. And, and then a big sobble, just because all the groundwater in the actually the groundwater in the state park and that uh, we're getting a lot of water that's splashing over our seawall. But then all the water that's uh, been ponding up uh, from the rain and everything else, um, the ground, you know, the groundwater is like two or three inches just below the uh, our foundation hmm. at, at Big Savile. And so we've had to put a sump pump in because on windy days and that, when we get a lot of water splashing over the seawall, and uh, the next day it evaporates into the ground and then it starts seeping into our uh, basement. At right. Big Savile. So. So we've had some water problems there. The state park uh, sent some engineers out uh, from the other side of the state. They're moving a couple of different buildings for them over um, on Lake Huron. And they sent two engineers out because they were sure they were going to have to move Big Sobble. But after the engineers took a look, they said, nope, with our new sump pump that uh, we had installed. And, and uh, it looks like we'll have some plans for hopefully putting some rock out in front of the seawall to break up the waves before they hit the seawall. Okay. So, All right. Good, and the, good. And the, and the state will be working with us for that. But uh, we did, uh, there was a dune on the north side of of the seawall that was right up to the seawall, and now you could uh, drive a truck between the seawall and the dune. It's it's collapsed so much. So, oh, man. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I we're, saw. We're, we're finding things that uh, that that the dune uh, had uh, shifted a few years ago, and uh, like some walkways that we forgot to roll up uh, winter season. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> and an old picnic table. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those walkways are, are very cool too. I mean, um, yeah, they are. But before I get into that, as far as yeah, I saw you on, on I think it was TV thirteen or somewhere. Somebody interviewed you. I know about yes. that because there's a lot of there was a lot of concern about the big Sable lighthouse. Right, so. Yes, yeah, yeah. Fox seventeen did. Yeah. No, oh, seventeen. Well, that was yeah, it. Yeah. I knew it was one of those stations. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. But uh, I'm surprised it wasn't Brad Ashcroft. You know, he didn't come out there and I do know, that. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but uh, um, as, as far as the uh, the sidewalks now those roll up those are very cool can you tell people a little bit about those because yeah, they can yeah, actually donate have, money we, yes yeah yeah one of our fundraisers is customized walkway boards uh that we put out at big sable we put them on a little sable and we also have them in the uh wheelchair ramp at uh, white river and for a hundred dollar donation uh you can have a customized walkway board with two lines of uh characters 25 characters per line and uh, so we get a lot of people uh, that uh, love to come out and see the lighthouse, and uh, and it's a memory for for people. And then they they uh, sponsor a walkway board, and then the next year they come out and take a look and uh, bring the and, grandkids uh, out or whatever. Yeah, bring the grandkids out and everything. We had one uh, grandparents uh, that they sponsored a walkway board. They had brought their grandchildren out, and of course you walk two miles out to Big Sable, and the grandkids after walking two miles out, two miles back said grandpa this is the death march 
So, so <laughs> gra- Graham and Grandpa put Death March on the on the board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is though. I mean, the, the, is, I yeah. tell you what. As far as the other ones, they're they're not, the the tower walking to the tower is not that bad. <sighs> but this one, not only is it the highest tower, you have yeah. to walk two miles to get to it, and then you right. walk up. What is it? How many uh, was it? Three hundred steps or something? No, no, one hundred and thirty. One hundred and thirty. Okay, it seemed yeah, like three hundred to me. I know. Uh, all I know is when I walked up that all the way to the tower and I walked yeah. down, I was fine. I seemed like I was fine. The next day, I could not move. So. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it catches me at the beginning of the season too. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh yeah. So that if you want to get some exercise, that's the one to go to. That's for sure. That, that is. That yeah. is. So. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, everything works out well. Uh, well with the uh, the big Sable, uh yes. lighthouse because uh, big Sabo point. Um, right. man, that's, it's a beautiful lighthouse. I mean, it's, it's one of the, you can go inside. It's got, it's all kinds of room in there. It's got a re- wonderful gift shop there. And it's got, of course, a great video that somebody helped yeah. put together. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, even the, like I say, even now is that, I, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but is the, which video is in the, uh, the, the room at the, uh, white river light station. I know you have the one upstairs, which is just about the white house, the white house, uh, the lighthouse. The, the, the one, uh, the one at, uh, in, in the keepers workshop, which is, uh, which is one of our new exhibits, uh, at the white river light station, uh, is where we play the video, uh, of the whole history of the white river light. Station. Okay. So All right. So that's, it's, yeah, a that. it's a really nice 10 minute video that, uh, that uh, really, uh, Oscar did a great. Oscar, you did a great job about uh, putting that together. And, uh, oh yeah, you you helped me a bit there, Peter. You helped yeah, me just well, a little that's bit. Right. That's right. <laughs> anyway, but the so the one upstairs, then I guess at the White River Light Station is the one about the keeper. Yes. Okay. Right. Yep. All right. Yep, that's correct. Yep. So yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. But anyway, that was yeah. that. That's a good one to watch too. So it is. Yep. Very much so. Yep. And uh, anyway, so I, I appreciate you talking to me today, and uh, I'm Great. looking forward to uh, for May to come so I can go visit the light stations again. I, I still haven't been inside the one at the uh, um, Ludington, uh, the breakwater. Oh, okay. Um, right. Every time I was up there in Ludington, it seemed like the water was going over. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's for sure. We were closed about 50% of the day yeah. last summer. Yeah, because I would the water was so. so high. Yeah, I never. We're probably, lo- we're probably looking at that again this year too. So because I would, I actually walked out there. Um, I don't remember what it was. It was it was before it opened anyway? So oh, okay, all right. And I actually got to walk out there, and then I went to when I went to go back to get inside, it was closed, mm-hmm. and it was like I don't know two or three times I went there, and it was closed. All <laughs> I went there because because of the water, because of the you know the water That's going right. over, well, you can't walk to, out I'll there. Have to call you on a sunny day when it's calm, and we'll go out together. All right, That's sounds great. good. It's a great. That's a great walk. Also, it's the it is. It is. It's a nice walk out. Oh yeah, yeah. So, all right, Peter. Thank you so much for uh, for talking to me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you very much, Oscar. I certainly appreciate it. So. And looking, like I say, looking forward to uh, visiting all the light stations around West Michigan. It's a, it's a it's it's fun. I mean, it, it is. It's fun. It's great exercise, and it's a whole family event. You know, very family friendly. Not very expensive to take the the, the tours. So that's, that's right. also yep. very, and it, of course the money goes back to preserving the, uh, the, uh, light station. So, yep, that's yeah. right. So thank you, sir. We'll talk to you real thank soon. You.